Long ago, Prajapati created the gestures that would change the Ganges Plains, Earth, into pottery. At Shiva and Parvati's wedding, Prajapati saves the day for the divine alliance by crafting with the skin of Shiva, the kumbh, the all-important water jar that is so essential to the celebration of a couple's wedding. In India, the pottery makers of Benares are a part of Prajapati's heritage. I gradually learned the job. I've been doing it for a very long time. My dad and my grandfather used to do it before me. It's the profession of our ancestors. And I am the third generation in our lineage. First we did the clay and then we cut it. Then it's trampled on the foot and then it's carved into pieces. After the trampling we use it to make cups. Then it goes on the puffer's wheel. And this is how we make the earthen cups. Starting the wheel is the potter's true challenge. Near Benares, pottery workers use a particular type of wheel. Let's call it a stick wheel. The round cement table is placed over a pointed base. Much agility is required in order to make it work in a balanced way. It only takes me about half a minute to make a cup. Or I can make up to 15,000 cups a month. Women also participate in the family business. They actually have a principal role since they are the ones who prepare the clay. As you can see, they assemble the big pieces that are made from two molded parts. These large pots keep the water cold. They have a refrigerating effect. But cups are actually the main focus in the family business. The pieces are shaped and then cooked. When there are enough cups, the pit for cooking is prepared. The cups are set around a dome made of earth. Then, they are covered with manure, an excellent natural fuel. Large pots are placed around the entire mound. The holes on the sides of the pots create an air draft that feed the fire. The fire is lit through the top of the dome. Then the flames are covered with hay and then earth in order to obtain the ideal temperature. There must be about 1,000 people in Benares. 1,000 people are doing this job. All of the potters of the region are from the same caste, the Kumbar. They owe their name to the famous large jar, the Kumb, that keeps their water fresh during the searing heat of the summer. With their family name, the children naturally inherit a profession, a tradition. They learn naturally during their play by imitating their parents. I want my children to do some other jobs. I want them to learn some business. There's really no profit in this job. It's useless. It's the only job I know. And then I have no choice. I can't do anything else, and I don't feel like doing anything else. I have to supply two or three shops daily. Those shops are about 15 to 20 kilometers away. And I have to go there every day.
The Chaivala, owners of the small boutiques where tea is served, are the largest customers. They require daily delivery, since the cups are meant to be used a single time and thrown away afterwards. Strict social codes require all cups that might have been used by lower castes to be destroyed. Even if they were washed, they would not be acceptable for use by anyone in a higher caste. Everyone loves chai, a hot and milky drink. Depending on the shop, the tea is stronger in cardamom, ginger, or cloves, to each his or her preference. In a month I can make up to 1700 rupees, but we barely get to eat with such small income. And this amount is not my profit. What I mean is, I've got to pay for raw materials, and we get by somehow. What to say then? Making it work, that means being patient. Life is difficult, a rupee is a rupee. Each penny is worth its hard work and worth the weight. Each drink means a living. And the challenge is to be respected and to try and avoid unpaid deliveries. We can't get clay, you see. And if we don't get the clay, then we close down the business. It's because houses are getting built everywhere. People won't let us dig fertile soil, you see. If the land produces crops, they won't let us dig there. No, they won't. Times change, the city grows, the buildings go up. A new urban scenery is developing before everyone's eyes. The land has no soil left in it. So there's no clay available. Since there's no soil left, God knows where it went. They bring the clay from the countryside. All the places where clay came from became houses. So where can one possibly get the clay from? Yeah, this is the reason. An earthen cup is better. It is pure. A plastic glass gets too hot. What can we do? When you go to someone else's house, you have to accept whatever they give. In our household, we still use earthen cups. Raw materials change, but not the habits. Because of plastic cups, I have to sell my wares for 10 rupees, where I could sell them for 15. Because of plastic, I'm dying. Plastic is too cheap. Plastic is cheaper, much cheaper. Cost me about 7, 8 rupees per hundred, whereas Earthen cups cost 12 to 15 per hundred. I prefer earthen cups. Because the taste of tea comes out better in earthen cups, whereas in plastic cups, the taste is changed. We feel a bit hurt sometimes, because we work so hard to make these cups, and people just smash them on the ground. 
Yogurt, tea, gulab jamun, the sweets in the streets of Benares are very much appreciated in jars made of earth. People have to realize that plastic causes a lot of trouble. It's so harmful. When people understand it, they respect it. They have to ban those plastic cups, so our profession can survive. If people stop using them, our business will surely improve. And we'll get some money for these cups. Generations of potters have lived from these earth jars without leaving any trace. Now, there's plastic. Plastic has been in use for eight or nine years. Usually, we have to bury the plastic waste where we can. If you break an earthen cup into pieces, it gets crushed underfoot and merged with the soil. Plastic is never going to merge with the soil. Wherever you throw it, the damn thing will remain neither rotting or dissolving.